AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's ride! Off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us, AFR, presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. This is Jack O'Neill, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. News. And Mr. Toby Tomblay. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Peter Burns of the SEC Network, 30 minutes from right now. It is always our pleasure. We get a few minutes with uh, the greatest defensive line coach to ever live, Pete Jenkins. Good enough to give us a couple of minutes. Coach Pete, it's always our pleasure. How are you? I'm doing very well, man. Thank you. Hey. Thank you for the kind words. Oh, yeah. man, you know that. Um, hey, you and I have a chance to talk from time to time, and I, I figure this would be a good opportunity maybe to – to let our, our audience in a little bit on your thoughts on what you see with with this team. We'll, we'll go narrow in a bit, but let me just talk big picture. Week one against Southern Cal, week five this last week against South Alabama, where would you say you've seen maybe the biggest improvement from this defense? Uh, I think I think there's several areas. I'm just, I hadn't thought about the question in that particular way. Uh, I think in several areas uh, we're better than we were. Um, I think the secondary is better. Um, I, I think uh, forty is forty is playing really well. I think at linebacker, mm-hmm. uh, the out the outside guys, the ends uh, are. I think they're really coming along, and um, and I think they're getting better inside at tackle, not. Good, but better. Um, had a long talk yesterday, Matt, with Bo. And, um, you know, the thing that I would like, you already know this, of course, and, and we've talked about this, you and I, but the thing I would like for your listeners to hear me say is, you know, those two guys, uh, Kevin Peoples and Bo Davis, uh, we're, we're very lucky to have them at LSU. They, they're they're really good. You you could you could look the country over and not find two better ones than those guys right there. And that, that's what I told Coach Kelly. I've been working with both of them for years and watching their progress and watching them grow as coaches. They're very they're highly motivated guys, both of them, and they are uh, extremely prideful guys. Bo yesterday, Matt. Uh, was better than he's been since the day he came to LSU. Hmm. He's been so disappointed in the product on the field, the play of the product. And I think uh, he told me yesterday, uh, let me start it by telling you this. I told him, I said, Bo, when I went in there last year, uh, I wanted to do it bad. I wanted, I wanted to to improve our situation as bad as I've ever wanted to do anything. But what I had to learn to live with was the time involved and everything. I was never able to get them real good. So what I became interested in doing is getting them better each week. And that's how I had to I, that's how I had to kind of temper my. I, I couldn't get them where I wanted, but I I worked hard for improvement each week, and to see them do things that help the scheme and help the defense and thus help the Tigers. Well, <clears throat> that's where I think Bo 
I, I finally, I think I got bold in that position, to tell you the truth. He saw improvement. He's been seeing improvement. And and he was really in the ditch for, for quite a while there and everything. But I think this, uh, man, he, he sees improvement, and he says to me, the, the guys, the, the players are really trying hard. They, they, it's important for them to do it. So when, when you get that as a coach, you know, you, you can, you can live with that. Uh, the guys that I had last year wanted to call, they wanted to be good really bad, but we, we got better. We got better. And that's what Bo's. That's what Bo's got to live with. Now, Kevin's a little bit different situation. He's got a few more athletic guys at his position. But I see them getting better also. Uh, so I, I think we come in, you know, and I don't think we're good. I think we're better. Mm. Does that answer? That's a long yeah. answer. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. Coach, <laughs> Coach Pete, people that listen to me talk all the time, I, I just want you to – I just want to know what's on your mind. Um, you know, what – what did this team lose when uh, when Tank, when Jacoby and Guillory got hurt? I think a lot. I do. Uh, you know, I'm very fond of him. And at last week, I was talking to Bo on the phone. We got off the phone, and in within three minutes, the phone rang, and I answered it, and it was Bo. And he said, Coach, guess who just walked in my office right as we got off the phone? And it was Guillory. Mm. And uh, so he put me on the phone, and and I told Gilry, I said, you know, uh, we we were talking about you. We were both struggling to find something to say nice about you, and what? <laughs> 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 and he, you know, he, he laughed all well, coach, you know. But it, I, I think he, I think it's a big loss. You know, I, I wouldn't say that, that that he is a great. Player, he, he's a really good player, but the thing he is is a, a determined, tough guy. And and LSU football is important to the kid. He told me he's going to come back next year and play. You know, he can get a he can get an injury year and everything. He's going to come back and play. So hmm. LSU football is important to him. And with that room, I mean, he Bo doesn't have anybody in his room that I coached. Nobody. All those guys are new. Wow. So. Hmm. I think I think that Tank would have given him uh, something to build on and and everything because, like I say, it's important to Tank and and I you know he reminds me of Bo a little bit as a player. He 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 is a tough guy and he'll get in there those double teams and scoops and everything. He'll get in there and root hog and die with him. He, he he's a tough guy. Yeah. I really admire that guy a great deal. And I know how important LSU football is uh, in his life. So I think it was a big loss, Matt, mm. to, to tell you the truth. Coach Pete Jenkins is our guest. Let me go from the veterans like to the really young guys, because what we've seen, Coach Pete, especially since Jacobian got hurt, was we've seen Ahmad Bro play a lot, and then Dominic right. McKinney. Is that, boy, is that Ahmad Bro? That's, that's the boy he, from Ruston. Yes, sir. So he he's from Ruston. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah, where? And I think he, I like him. I think he's going to be a good hand. So yeah, I would love to know, bro. And then um, Dominic McKinley is the. You know, he didn't play the first two weeks. He's just played the last two games. He was coming off an injury. But I would love your thoughts on those those two young guys. What do you see from Ahmad well, Bro? And if you have seen Dominic, I, McKinley? I, I, well, I don't know McKinley uh, to the extent I know Bro. Uh, okay, I think Bro's. Uh, I think Bro's a future star for the Tigers. Uh, from what I hear, Bo talk about him. You know he's a tough guy too. He, he's he, he's he's a guy that enjoys smacking people around, <laughs> and uh, you know that's important. I don't think I don't think there's quite enough of that in in Bo's room. Listen to him talk, but 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 Ahmad Bro from Rustin is a guy that he when I can tell it in Bo's voice when he talks about him. He he he's a guy that's uh, he's guys he's a tough guy. He's a guy that enjoys that, that, that right, you know, when you play defensive tackle, you know. But uh, I, I'm not sure. I can't comment on the other boy. I'm not, I, I'm not sure. Uh, and I've seen the guys at 31 make a really nice move mm -hmm. against uh, 
you got to say, uh, one last week, it was the week before. Right, it was against UCLA. Uh, he had a really nice swat and swim. Uh, and, and there, you, you know, I'm beginning to see a little coaching taking on these guys. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm just, I, I feel encouraged. I feel encouraged. I don't feel good. I feel encouraged that they're, that they're getting better. And, and, uh, and I, I think the ends are, 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 are getting better, too. I think they're playing uh, six. Uh, Bordick played outside backer last year. Um, uh, no, number six? Yeah. Um, what's Jordan Allen? Oh, four. Oh, four. four. Uh, well, Harold Perkins. Harold Perkins is the one who got hurt. No, 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 not Harold. Uh-huh. Bordick played outside backer last year. Oh, you're, oh you're, you're talking about uh, about Braden Swinson. Swinson, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I think Swenson's come a long way this year. The thing, the thing with Swenson last year, he rushed past the quarterback a lot. He was, you know, and that's a guy you, you he can be over there sitting with, on the bench with me. Once you get pushed by the quarterback, all that property is worth nothing back there. <laughs> and 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 really, you're playing with ten. It, it's one of my pet peeves to see guys get pushed by the quarterback because. You, you like you like I say, if you get pushed by the quarterback, then the defense is playing with ten guys because you ain't no good to them for nothing. So, but I see him turning the edge, and uh, he, he's become a pretty pretty good dead gun pass rusher. Uh, he always had some physical skills, but I think Kevin's helped him a lot. To be honest with you, I, I think he's a he's a he's a good player. You know, and they move zero, Harris. Mm-hmm. They moved him in there to three technique. He's playing three technique some, and and he's not physically the body that you want in there, but he's he's a guy that can give you everything he's got. Yeah, there and a smart guy and a smart guy. So uh, you know, last year it was my fault to move thirty five in there because <clears throat> we were short. You know, we I had three tackles. If I get one hurt, I got I got, you know if I get, if I get one hurt. It means that I got two guys playing, and I don't know what's going to happen if I haven't mm. done the injury. So, so I moved thirty-five. I wasted two weeks of his life and two weeks of mine moving him in there. Uh, <laughs> the better move, the better move was moving Paris in there. He, he's he's better equipped to play in there than thirty-five is. Thirty-five is thirty-five is happier and better at defensive end. And he went in there. He moved in there like I asked him to, and everything. But it just it won, you know, it won to his liking. To be yeah. honest with you, and I think I think Parrish has accepted that role and wants to do good at it. So that was a good move by uh, by, by Bo and those guys this year to, to move Parrish in there. He he he'll he'll fight you, and, and uh, he needs a little more lead in his pencil. But he <laughs> he he he's he he's, he's a pride he's a prideful guy. Yeah, uh, I, I, Coach, I, I got plenty of lead in my pants. I mean, I'm trying to lose some of the lead in my pants, if you know. I mean, <laughs> so, I, so I need to cut, cut back on on the beer drinking during football season. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey. but I can tell by those places that you advertise on your show. <laughs> Sounds like man, I tell you, I think I, I, I need to go and hang out with Matt for a while, man. Yeah. Because you got some good uh, people that are advertising in some the, the rest restaurants. And, and uh, places and bar at some good looking stuff, man. They keep me fed, coach. They keep me fed. <laughs> um, all right, la- hey, last thing for you. Um, yes. What would if I asked you? What do you think? All right, five games in, there's seven to go. How much better realistically can this defense get from now to the you know to the end of November? Uh, I don't think they're going to be like some of them. I've been around. But they can get better. And from what they got the coaching, and from what Bo and Kevin tell me, they got the want to. So you put those two together. I talked to Christian Lockheed about oh, a couple of hours ago. <clears throat> he is a perfect example, Matt. Christian, God bless him. He's like me. He was non athletic, okay? And uh, he <laughs> not, couldn't run, couldn't run, couldn't, you know. I never told him that when he was playing, right. of course. But, <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm make, sure, make sure I tell him that. <laughs> well, he knows I feel that way. Yeah. But look, look I, I, you know, 
he and Greg Gilmore, uh, two guys that were a challenge for me coaching. But look, listen, look, in their senior, that senior year, then Christian had seven and a half sacks and Greg had eight. Mm-hmm. They played so hard, and they 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 took coaching, and they 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 were they were prideful guys too. They wanted to be LSU defensive linemen. They wanted to uphold the tradition that we had in that room. And I don't know the kids now <clears throat> because I know the ends better than I know the tackles. But you gotta have that want to get you a long way, man. It gets you a long way. And and one of the reasons that I left LSU satisfied, you know, Coach, coach asked me, uh, he, he said, if you'll come and help us make the opponent punt two or three times in the game, we had a chance to win the game <laughs> because our offense is that good. And, and of course, it's kind of hold, uh, it's kind of showing up in throw football, too, isn't it? I mean, yeah. James killing it, man. How about he, that? He was, yeah, he looks just like he did in college. I mean, that 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 like Henry Thomas. First time I ever saw Henry Thomas play was in an exhibition game at New Orleans preseason, and he looked just like he did. And I looked at Don and my wife, and I said, "You know, that watching him, he looks just like he did playing at LSU last year." Yeah. And and some guys make that transition much quicker than others. Jaden looks right at home to me in the NFL. I mean, that guy's playing at a high level. I'm so happy and proud for him. Yeah. And and uh, the receivers are doing good, too. But, you know, so the sun was going down. We play in Texas A&M. And, and uh, someone tells me on the sideline, they said, you know, today, Coach, in the game, uh, A&M had five three and outs. And I thought, well, we got done with – Coach Kelly. <laughs> Coach Kelly. <Sure. laughs> and when they lose but one game and and it looked like the guy that you saw Saturday night playing against Georgia, that's that's what we dealt with. I told I told my buddy at the D line coach at Georgia, I said, you know, it reminded me the first half of that game reminded me of our night in Tuscaloosa. Mm. I mean, we Galen was running wild on us, you know, yeah. and, and uh he was a difference in the game. He's he was kept, he's the difference in the game. He and that receiver is the difference in the game Saturday night. But uh, you know, here's the thing too that I, 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 you know people are saying Alabama took the foot off the um, off the gas in the second half. But you know they ran Jalen nine times in the first half for over a hundred yards. They ran him seven times in the second half for like forty yards. It wasn't they took the foot off the gas. It was Georgia. Georgia Georgia showed a lot of resilience, didn't they? Wasn't that unbelievable? Yeah. What a comeback, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was. I mean it, it was it was it was a wild game. Nothing I would have ever anticipated. But boy it was it was they, they those two teams, it was a damn war now. Those two teams really played hard against one another. They'd probably see see each other down the road somewhere. There's a really good chance uh, that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Pete, we, we're late for a break. Yes, we got to run. I always appreciate right, the time. Friend. You're the best. We'll catch up down the road, always, okay? Always enjoy it. Thank you, man. Our pleasure. That is uh, the one and only Coach Pete Jenkins. Well, I got a break. It's AFR. After further review. Brought to by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel. Two amazing hotel properties in Baton Rouge. Watermark downtown, the Renaissance Southtown right there on Blue Bonnet. Tell you about it all the time. Hey, if you are... Thinking about an event coming up soon. I know I mention it all the time, but make sure you call my friend Allison Crump. She's the events manager there over at the Renaissance Hotel. She always says, "We're at the Renaissance, we're in the business of saying yes. So whatever your event is, we tell you all the time for every home football weekend, LSU is there the Friday before. But maybe it's a wedding reception. Maybe you're planning an awards banquet. Maybe... It's a fundraiser, some type of gala. There's so many different, maybe it's a, it's a board meeting or a conference. The Renaissance Hotel has their sprawling space that they can manipulate that space for any event type or style that you have. So just give them a shout today and give them a shot. Call Allison today over at the Renaissance Hotel. 
after further review. Presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. We're going to move quickly here. we got Peter Burns coming up in just a few minutes. Went a little long with Pete Jenkins, but I don't care. Oh, uh, Pete, Coach Pete can talk for as long as he wants, and I'll just sit here and listen to him talk forever. What a great, uh, great source of information. We appreciate him. Uh, Heather Dinich over at ESPN earlier today reported that the Big Ten and the SEC athletic directors are going to discuss are discussing a possible partnership in football scheduling. Uh, this would be along with their preferences for automatic bids. That'll be the next iteration of the college football playoff. Uh, their in place meeting scheduled for Nashville next week. And remember, the the current format of the college football playoff run through 2026. So you're going to have at least two years of this format, this structure, before it could potentially change. And I think everyone is anticipating it will change because the G5 auto bid is going to go the way of the dodo bird. I, I've yelled about this for years. I know a lot of you push back on me for it, but there's no reality where a G5 should get an auto bid ever, ever. If you are good enough to earn a bid, okay. But there's no reality where, certainly in a 14 playoff, but even in a 12 or 16 or a million team playoff, that that a G5 should be guaranteed an auto bid. If you're not going to play an equitable schedule with the rest of college football, your 12 and 0 or 11 and 1 is not equivalent to a 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 of a Power Five team that had to play all those games. Ask yourself this question: How many teams? could play a G5 schedule. Look at whoever finishes first. If it's Boise or UNLV or whomever it may be. How many, James Madison, how many teams could play that G5 schedule and finish with the same record? And odds are you're going to find 30 or so power four teams that that could finish with that record against that schedule. So, no, you shouldn't get an auto bid. If you want to play it out and earn it, I mean, I guess you could get there, but that's, that's going to change. Um... I think what's maybe most interesting is the potential of a um, of a schedule alliance, for lack of a better phrase, with the SEC and the Big Ten, which is only going to move us further toward what we all feel is an inevitability, where, and I think by now everyone feels this way, uh, whereby, you know, the you're going to have this one college football, and gosh, I, I mean, y'all, I've. It's it's interesting to me if I just take a step back. Like, I mean, this is something that I've talked about here for a decade. And for a long time, people rolled their eyes. They didn't get it, didn't see it, whatever. And now it's just, it's crystallizing. It just always made the most sense to me that this is where, like, you could just see the path that college football was heading. And it's going to be an invite only or a or a buy-in only because when, when you have this insatiable ap- appetite for growth, I mean, it's, it's like people in business. I mean, you could look at Amazon or Apple or any of the biggest companies in the world and say, well, why aren't, why aren't they content with where they are? They're constantly looking, okay, well, how do we scale revenue from a billion to five billion to 10 billion to 100 billion? It's just to a trillion. I mean, it's just, there's just always that, like, if you're not growing, then what are you doing? So there's always a growth mindset. And that's where college football, that's where all sports leagues are. I mean, that's where, I mean, all the professional leagues, of course, are there. Because those franchises are run by by billionaires that have a growth mindset. They're not going to be content with revenues being where they are. They want to see them grow. And college football is the same. I mean, it, it's what it is. Because you continue to see coaching salaries increase and the need for facilities. And now NIL and revenue sharing with student athletes. So you got to keep increasing revenue. So how do you increase revenue? So they're constantly going to be looking at those paths. And the most obvious path for, path for increasing revenue is going to be to, to cut from the bottom. Like you don't need any of the the G five teams, the Power Four, or however many schools that is, is having their own league, which looks like a prof- an NFL model, is the most natural path. By the way, for everyone that argued, I want to say this very clearly for all of you in the back to hear. Hey, for everyone that argued an expanded college football playoff was going to neuter the sacred regular season of college football. How many people looked like what happened in Tuscaloosa on Saturday didn't matter? (laughs) I mean, you had Bama fans crying real tears when Georgia took the lead in the fourth quarter. 
a September game that doesn't really matter anymore because of expanded college football playoff, right? The hell out of here, bro. <laughs> I mean, y'all. some of y'all fought with every damn bit of your being against an expanded playoff, throwing out every cliched piece of crap that you've been force-fed down your throat your entire lives about the sacred regular season and tradition and all that crap. Don't matter a lick, bro. Give people an entertaining product. Give me, give me less of... Ole Miss scoring 70 on Furman. Give me more of Ole Miss, Kentucky, Bama, Georgia. Give me more of that. USC, Michigan. Give me more of that every weekend of the college football season. And that's where we're headed. And part of this is inevitable. The SEC and the Big Ten are going to flex their muscles. They're going to kick out the, the little guy. They're going to guarantee themselves for auto bids. And if the other leagues don't go along with it, they're going to say, fine, we'll just break away and have our own 30-team, 32-team mini playoff with the SEC and the Big Ten. And, oh, by the way, they'll they'll go poach other schools from other leagues and just do their own thing eventually. So it's it's an inevitability where we're heading with all this. And you may not like it, but are you not entertained? Look at the product you're seeing. Look at revenues going up. Look at TV ratings. Go Look at everything going up. It's an inevitability where we're heading. We'll follow that with those meetings next next week in Nashville. Hey, let me not got a quick break. Y'all know we had to be quick here. We got Peter Burns coming up. It's AFR. After further review. Brought to you by Action. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Brought to you by Action Industries. Thought so. I was making sure I was doing the right one. Brought to you by Action Industries. Action, I-N-D-I-N-C dot com. Action, I-N-D-I-N-C dot com for actions in, in, Action Industries Incorporated. Hey, remember our friends over at Action Industries, they got those two turnarounds coming up. They're still in recruitment mode right now. So they were looking for 100 to 125 people. Spots are filling up. If you're a welder, crane operator, a pipe fitter, um, you know, if you are a boiler maker, they're looking for you over at Action Industries right now. Uh, it's a four to five week turnaround. All the, the work is local here in Greater Baton Rouge. Two different turnarounds. Working seven twelves. So you know it's a lot of work. A lot of hours that four to five weeks. Man, the pay is going to be good and be just in time for the holidays as well. It's Action Industries. You can apply online or in person at their Highway 30 office in Geismar. Just go into the office and ask for Zach. It's Action Industries, a proud partner of LSU Athletics. After further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. This week in the SEC with Peter Burns. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's separate the contenders from the pretenders. Number 11 of the defense. Going to have a shoe player shoot. 20 yards down the field. With Peter Burns of the SEC Network. Presented by Blue Delta Jeans. Hey, we got the intro turned around. How are you, PB? Whoa, whoa. Now I'm nervous. I've never been nervous before doing shows with you, but now I feel like like there, that was a process. Somebody had to write that, yeah. and you had to give it to an editor, and yeah. then it like had to go get approved. So now I need to actually say something that's interesting. I'll I say. know, man. Uh, Amanda had to voice it. Our our uh, I know. our editor, our um, our editor had to go uh, production editor to go put all that together. You had Blue yeah. Delta tagged on there as well. She got a sponsor on the hook as well. Whew. Buddy. Oh, man, that's a lot of pressure All right. here. I'm, deep breath. I'm ready. I'm, so, I'm ready to deliver. Let's so go. is this where you get the 28-point lead, or is this the point where you blow the 28-point lead? Oh, this this is a point where I absolutely just crush it the rest of the day. How wild was that game? I know. I mean, that 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 was as as weird of a game. And in, in, in what sucks is that it's 28 nothing. We're watching it. Me, Doring, and, and Ben Watson are in the studio. And then right as the comeback starts happening, the LSU base, the game is ending. And so we're live on air right as soon as, you know, the, the clock hits zero. So we start our show. So all I, all I see is Benjamin Watson, former Georgia Bulldog, at the side of his, of his eye, like not paying attention to me, but totally paying attention to the game. <laughs> and I get ready to ask him a question. I see him just like absolutely crush this pen in his hand. And I look, and that's right when Georgia took the lead. And I thought my man was going to blow a gasket. Like, if you go back and watch SEC football final, <laughs> you can tell the angst of, of what's happening in that game. And then they, the one shot would come to me, like I'd ask a question, and both of those guys are losing their mind right when, when Ryan Williams, the damn 17-year-old, takes it to the house. Yeah, that was crazy, man. So T-Bob and I were doing whiskey and wine. So same thing. So we had you all on the TV in front of us, and the TV yeah. to our left was the Bama-Georgia game. So it was it was lit, 
I was literally the same thing. Like we're doing a show, trying to keep an eye on that. And it was, it, it was a wild finish. Um, were you, I, I guess like, so what, what is the big, the big takeaway from the game PB? Is it, you know, I, no, go ahead. Just what either side, Bama or Georgia, what is the biggest takeaway yeah, from the game? I, I, honestly, the biggest takeaway was, was something like even bigger picture because I started thinking, I did this segment on my show this morning. I actually posted a, 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 a on, on Twitter earlier today. I go, you know, hey, we're, we're looking at Alabama being the number one team in the country. And now AP voters are there. They're punch drunk on it. It was 28 nothing. Everybody was dunking on Georgia. And I go, well, wait a minute. If Ryan Williams doesn't catch that ball yep. and all of a sudden they don't score, let's flip this. Like, what, what, what would we have been talking about today? We would have talked about how Kirby got over the hump, about how Alabama just blew arguably the biggest lead in SEC history on the biggest stage that Kalen DeBoer failed where Nick Saban always had it. I'm like, how, how small and fine that, that line is in the way that second half played out. I mean, Georgia had the damn lead after that. Can you imagine the, the, the fallout? Yes. Had yes, Georgia I actually can. won yes, that game? Yes, I can, Peter. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, I can. Uh, the start of the show today would have been nuclear, uh, considering my yeah. antics over the last eight months. Yes, Peter, I can imagine what it would have been like had they finished off but, that. But, but but take the way is that I thought, and I said earlier in the week I had picked Alabama because I thought that they were going to be the more aggressor, that Alabama is built to take it to you, that Georgia's more of a counterpuncher. Hmm. And and that's what it played out until all of a sudden, man, you found yourself, you have a couple broken ribs, a couple of bloodied eyes, and, and all of a sudden you're like, what the hell is going on here? And it was it was almost just too late. And so I think that's where, like, Georgia does not have players this year that that strike fear. Brock Bowers would strike fear. Even Lad McConkey, because he was so methodically um, efficient, would strike fear. Bama has those guys, and Jalen Milrow and Ryan Williams, and I think that's the difference in that game. Uh, Peter Burns is with us. He's on Twitter at Peter Burns ESPN. Chats every Monday, courtesy of Blue Delta Jeans, BlueDeltaJeans.com. Hey, um, oh, I know we got to you late, so I'm going to move a little quickly, but I, I want to flip and ask you about the Ole Miss loss. Is it? Is it more impressive for Kentucky or more disappointing for Ole Miss? Yes, and that's not a cop out. I mean, I, I I had taught. I was down there in Lexington the week before, and Vince Merrow, one of their assistant coaches, who's been with Stoops from day one, he looked me in the eye, and like literally took me to the side. He goes, "Hey, I got to tell you something." I'm like, "What?" He goes, "We're about to go on a run." Now, this is before the Ohio game. He goes, "We're about to go to run the next couple of weeks that are going to shock everybody." And I'm like, "Okay." And he goes, "No, like I'm serious." So they believe they they were so pissed off that they lost the Georgia game that it, it was like, dude, we can compete with anybody. And so that's that that didn't surprise you that they were going to give them a, a run, even with Maxwell Harrison being out. But what surprised me is two things. One, Lane still has not won a big game. Right. I mean, you go back and look at last year's game against us. and That wasn't great. I mean, it, it was a good win, but it wasn't a, a, a marquee victory. But that was a bad loss they took. And they don't have running backs right now. I mean, when Harry, when Henry Parrish was not available, uh, Quinshawn obviously is in Ohio State, and then um, you know the, the the kid Ulysses Benner or whatever, he, he's not even playing right now. So it's a it's a weird deal. Um, do you think they can recover? Oh, meaning Ole, Ole Miss? I don't think Kentucky's a contender, but I mean Ole Miss is, has no. playoff aspirations. I mean, can they still get into the playoff? Uh, yeah, but I mean, think about this. And uh, so they this is five weeks in a row. And I talked to Brock Vandergriff on my show today, and I was like, "Hey, I bet y'all want to play again now that the, that now that y'all are playing good." He goes, "Dude, I, we are tired. We're beat up. Mm. We can't wait for a bye week." Mm. And that's after five weeks. So now Lane coming off that loss, they got to go play a very physical defense in in South Carolina, which which LSU fans know about. Yep. And remember, South Carolina is coming off of a bye, so they're real rested, ready to, to punch somebody in the mouth. And then they got another week where LSU is going to be coming off a bye. So. Again, it's a de facto playoff game in Death Valley for, for Ole Miss because I don't think that they're going to beat Georgia later in the season. So I don't see a three-loss Ole Miss team. So LSU-Ole Miss is almost like a, a like a playoff game, environment of that night game. Peter Burns with us, SEC Network. He's on Twitter at Peter Burns ESPN. Uh, you're you're not on the road this week again, right? You're not, you're not back on the road until next Correct. week? Correct. Um, uh, I think it's week eight, yes. Oh, man, so you got a little bit of a layoff here, huh? Two weeks, buddy. Hey, listen, I'm a big dog now. I got my own show intro. Okay, look at that guy. Uh, okay, so who was the more 
Well, I was going to say who's the more disappointing loss: Ole Miss losing the way they did, or or Auburn, or even Auburn. It's not. It's not Arkansas. Even close. I Auburn. mean, that, I know, man. Golly, right? I mean, what? I mean, what is happening? A true freshman. They're down five wide receivers, and the only way you're going to lose that game Bro. is if you turn the ball over and they throw a damn pick six. I mean, that's. That's brutal. So mm. I, I, this is something I did today at the end of the show. And think about this, okay? So think about the butterfly effect that still haunts Alabama and Auburn from the Iron Bowl last year, the fourth and 31 play, right? The Gravedigger play. Yeah. You know who the, who the big recruit is that was in the stands that day? I, I, would, Ryan guess, I would guess Ryan Williams, yeah. Yeah, he was leaning towards Auburn. They said that when Alabama made that play, he's like, oh, man, I want to go to school at Alabama now. like that. So that not only is that a flip, but Hugh would have gotten a monster win over Saban, an even bigger butterfly effect. If fourth and 31 doesn't happen, do we think that Saban would have retired and would he have gone out with his last game being a loss to a bad Hugh Freeze Auburn team? No, he would have had, so. had a bowl game, Pete. He'd gone to the, yeah, to the Rely Quest. Yeah, and I, he wasn't <laughs> going out like that. No, kidding, right? And then yeah. think about that. Yeah. And then Georgia probably beats. You know, Georgia probably wins the SEC championship yes. game, or even if they lose it, they probably still would have been in over Alabama. I mean, the the, the butterfly effect of that one play is 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 absolutely shocking. It's a great point, no doubt. I mean, it, it, you're you're right too on the on the Hugh gets a big win, but also Georgia probably wins the national championship. Um, because, well, yeah, they go they go three Pete. And by the way, real quick, I don't think Auburn's going to make a bowl this year. Go look at the rest of their schedule, Matt. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Pete? I, like, I when we were at Media Days, I kind of bought the. I mean, you know how that goes there. I mean, it's four days and everybody's oh, asking the same questions. And you mentality. Say, sure. Yeah, it, it's just in. But you also, I think, start to formulate opinions based on what was told. And I looked at Auburn from a year ago and I went, well, I mean, they threw up on themselves against New Mexico State, and they it was fourth and thirty one, or they beat Bama. I mean, they were that close to winning eight games a year ago, Pete. And I'm like. And, and then their first five games are at home, and yes, they're all winnable. Yes, I'm going. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this can be like an eight-win Auburn team. Maybe that's the team no one's valuing. And lo and behold, man, Cal, Arkansas, Oakland. You lose three of your first five, all at Jordan Hare, and now you get to go and play at Georgia, and you've got at Missouri and at Kentucky. Like, ooh, bro, it's it's probably. And you still got A ba- and M and Bama. Like, it's going to get gnarly for them. I think you're right, dude. Like, and, five is going to be and, tough. And, well, the the thing is, when Hugh was hired, it brought the entire fractured fan base and power base of Auburn all together again. They were fired up. Yeah, that's out of the window now, and, and it's and it's almost now back where where it was during the Malzahn and Chiz days, and 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 where you're like, all right, well, what really are we? I mean, that's that's a tough place to be if you're Auburn. Yeah, man. Um, Peter Burns with an intro and everything, courtesy of Blue Delta Jeans. Y'all get to bluedeltajeans.com. Uh, always appreciate the chat, man. Tell Tiger Joe we said hi. Uh, he's in uh, karate class right now, and I'm fired up to. I'm already counting down the hours until I'm uh, in Baton Rouge here in two weeks for the Ole Miss game. Let's go! All right, all right. We're we're doing something. I don't care. You're coming in the studio. We're meeting up somewhere when you're in town. You're not leaving Baton Rouge without at least saying hello. All right. Uh, thanks, man. We'll see you. See you, buddy. All right. That's Peter Burns. Brought to you by First South Farm Credit. FirstSouthLand.com. FirstSouthLand.com. Thinking of buying land? Your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Log on, firstsouthland.com. Ben McDonald, when he wanted to buy his hunting property, he went to First South Farm Credit. If it's good for the first pick of the draft, your first call should be First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com. That's firstsouthland.com. Y'all, since 1916, they've been doing one thing. More than 100 years. Helping Louisianians buy land. You want to buy land? Your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. First South Land. Dot com. All right, good stuff, man. If you missed Pete Jenkins earlier this hour, Peter Byrne just there. We opened up the show with my take on LSU, uh, South Alabama. Takeaways from the Saints gag job against the Atlanta Falcons. That's all there. And I will give you, I've not yet done it, tell your tell your Bama friends. Send them the link to the show. Send them the YouTube link. Uh, 15 minutes from right now, I'll give you my full reaction to uh, Alabama and Georgia. I know a lot of you have been waiting, especially those Bama fans who were uh who were murdering my Twitter mentions during the first half and then went conspicuously silent in the second half. <laughs> Excited about this. All right, stay here. I will do Tigers and the Pros next. AFR.
AFR is brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time, or you don't pay a dime. Y'all give them a buzz, 752-0001, Got issues with your HVAC, River City's One Hour Air. They're the best. That's why you see the big yellow vans and trucks all over town. So many of your friends and neighbors, just like I do, trust River City's One Hour Air. They've been around for four decades. they got more than double the amount of five-star Google reviews of the next closest competitor. You do, one of the reasons I read these Google reviews all the time is just that you don't always hear this type of praise for an HVAC company. Uh, Miles Johnson sent this five-star review. Bellamy was a great technician, showed me detailed pictures of my issues, broke down the needs to get my AC back up and running, and things that needed attention. The cost breakdown very well. Also, another five-star Google review for River City's One Hour. I'll tell you all the time, they're not going to upcharge anything. They're going to show you good, better, and best options, and you make the decision that's best for your family and your budget. It's River City's One Hour Air, 752-0001. After further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding, and oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. All right, wrapping up hour number two. Big shout out Brandon Holly and the gang over at Relief Windows. They're just the best. You need windows, door siding, or shutters. You need the best. You need Relief Windows. All right, Musu Tigers in the pros. Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, let's start with Major League Baseball. West. Paul Skeens. Had his final start over the weekend. Oh, how did he do? He threw two innings, and then they got him out of there. <laughs> yeah, he got run after two innings. Now they crushed no, him. No, no, no. That's what I heard. No, no, no. Oh, Actually, no, that's not what happened. He threw two shutout innings, and the Pirates got the win that day oh, over good. the Yankees. The Yankees won yesterday. Yeah, I'm but good. We already won the division. The, the, We're good. I don't care. The The main thing here is that Paul Skeens finished his rookie season 11-3 and three with a sub-2 ERA. He's like the first guy since 1900 to yeah. do that. Presidents with long beards yes. and stuff like that. Struck out 170. He's gonna he's gonna win rookie. He won Baseball America's Rookie of the Year, and he's going to win Major League Baseball Rookie of the Year as well for the National. Can't League. wait to cash that ticket, yes. Muse. Me, me too. I got it at plus three eighty, and I'm very excited about it. Aaron Nola was on the bump yesterday as well, and he got his 14th win of the season. Closed out his season that way. Five innings, three earned. Didn't walk anybody. Struck out seven. Really solid mm-hmm. year, and his uh, Phillies are off to the playoffs. Dylan Cruz was on the other side. Cruz went three for three in the game, including his first career triple, and that came off of Aaron Nola. Jaden Daniels. Heard him. We'll just continue with the history-making stuff here. 233 233 through the air yesterday, 47 on the ground, two total touchdowns. He was 26 of 30. Jaden Daniels through four games, 82% completion percentage. That is the best in the history of the NFL through the first four games, a minimum of 75 attempts. Bro, like, that was Tom Brady's record. Yeah. And he obliterated it. As a rookie. That's what I'm saying, as a rookie. No, but this is just in general, for what I'm looking at in general. Oh, that's not for rookies. No, because Tom Brady did it in 2007. Oh, yeah, that was the, the 07 team that was right. the 17 and 0 team. Wow. That's pretty he's, good. He's good. Yeah. He's good. Remember when the Bears took... Someone else instead of Jaden Daniels? Yeah, it was Caleb Williams. <laughs> That's <laughs> who it was. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Joe Burrow got the dub yesterday for the Bengals, 232 through the air with a couple of tuds. Jamar Chase, three receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Did you see the 63 yarder where he like yes. humiliated the entire Panthers defense? Yes. That was so good. I liked that a lot. Uh, and uh, Brian Thomas, six receptions, 86 yards, score. The Jaguars stink, though. And we'll wrap it up with Jets. Six receptions, 85 yards, and a score. Almost identical stat line there to uh, to BTJ. That's Tigers of the Pros. Presented by South Point Volkswagen, southpointvw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge online at southpointvw.com, southpointvw.com. You're in the market for a vehicle? You better put Volkswagen on your list. If you've never driven a Volkswagen, thought about a Volkswagen, y'all, I was in the same boat 14 years ago. South Point wanted to do some advertising with us. I said, I've never driven a Volkswagen. I went and I test drove every single model they had, fell in love with the brand, with the line, with the people at South Point, and that's all Eric and I have driven since. If you're thinking about a vehicle, just put Volkswagen on your list. You'll have the same experience I did. By the way, the Red Tag sales event's going on right now. You want to save big, you can. They're Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer. It's South Point Volkswagen. Online at southpointvw.com, southpointvw.com, South Point Volkswagen. 
What's your direction? All right, remember, you can always email us, tweet us, text us in the 225-396-4400, 396-4400, Lots of ways to get involved in the show. Um, coming up right after the top of the hour, I will jump into... Uh, we have not talked yet about Alabama-Georgia. And I'm certain there's a lot of people who are, who are interested in my thoughts on that. So we'll get to that coming up right after Sports Center. Uh, one maybe significant piece from the game Saturday with LSU was the injury to Caden Durham. I did share this a bit ago. I know we shared it at Louisiana Sports Sunnet for those that might have missed it. Uh, Caden Durham, um, we were told after the game, dislocated two toes. So that was the injury that, that he suffered. Uh, Brian Kelly did not seem to think, can you play real quick? This was Brian Kelly's answer. We have time real quick. Brian Caden Durham not playing in the second half. Uh, what's he dealing with? Foot, you know, but we don't see it as being, you know, anything that's a major injury. Okay. Uh, we'll follow as we go through the bye week. AFR. Hey, I want to remind you about Parish Restoration. You can go to parishbuilt.com. One website for all of it. Uh, Parish Restoration, if you have mold, think you might. Odor, pet odor, smoke from cigarettes or, or maybe a fire. Um sweat, maybe your workout facility that that you know, I remember I remember taking Taekwondo when I was a kid and went into Taekwondo. There was a carpet in the in the in the facility. And obviously you go in there, you sweat so much. You, you, I, the, I could still smell it, right? If you want to get rid of that sweat or sweat odor, the workout facility, wherever it may be, call Parish Restoration. They can come spray their patented non-toxic dry fog. It'll kill odor all the bacteria that causes odor. It's great sanitization for a medical facility, for a school, for an office building, no matter how big or small. Make sure you check out Parish Restoration. Go to parishbuilt.com, hit the restoration tab. Parishbuilt.com, do business with someone you know.